Hi, this week's weekly roundup has a cheap 3D resin printer, a couple of Cortex M0 boards, uh, what else? Pocket oscilloscope. Oh yeah, pocket oscilloscope. And what else? CNC machine. A new type of CNC machine, and of course, the new upboard. First up on Kickstarter, the new upboard has arrived. Oh, wait, I'm a bit early. Well, let's come back to that later. The Blue Bug is a small Kickstarter coming out of India. It contains an ESP8266 with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and two L293D motor drivers. It can also be used as an Arduino shield. I'm surprised they didn't attach Worlds first to this Kickstarter. The Morpheus Delta is a full 3D resin printer. Normal resin printing works by firing a laser into a bucket of resin which hardens. This method works by using light-induced plain solidification, which potentially lowers the cost of the device. Nice. Yet another Cortex M0 Plus board. The Danny board contains the Atmel SAM D21 with Wi-Fi, SD, RTC and LiPo battery management and is fully supported under the Arduino IDE. The Tau was on Kickstarter a while ago, but the previous campaign had limited funds to produce more of them. So it's back on Kickstarter again. This is yet another Cortex M0 based board with just the basics. Looking for a battery backup for your Pi? This hat takes standard 18650 lithium ion batteries and has all the usual monitoring options accessible over ITC. If you have a need to create your own battery packs, then this is a good idea. The Maker Batteries concept gives you two different pre welded battery pack types that you can put together in any format or size you like. The Maslow CNC is a new take on an old concept. Instead of having a horizontal bed, the Maslow flips it vertically and the router is controlled by two chains driven by motors. Two bricks and gravity does the rest, capable of working in a 4 by 8 foot area. You get all this for under $500. Nice. The Lindell, well, hey, it's just a doorbell, but the difference is it's programmable and the switch has inbuilt energy harvesting, which means no batteries would be good to see more energy harvesting solutions like this around. Then there's the new upboard. Ah, oh, really? Ah, oh, okay, still going. Let's check back on this later. Indiegogo has its usual supply of hair-brained campaigns. I thought I'd throw this one in because it's just so outrageous. You've seen it all before. Infinite energy from magnetic motors. Good grief. And this guy wants only a billion dollars to pull it off. Funnily enough, there's only one perk, which will set you back around two billion, which is, if you give me this womany, we'll give you the company exclusive, or whatever the heck that is. Another dubious one, these guys want around half a million to create a new Linux distribution, which is faster and safest than any other we have used. First of all, it's not brand new. Secondly, it's all open source guys, come on. Thirdly, it's just Linux. The Bibli was another one that I originally thought was dubious, but it turns out is a three-year-old creation created by a bunch of students, teachers and engineers to create a platform to teach robotics to students. They provide all the hardware and a robotics operating system to get young makers learning about social robotics. Crowd Supply has only one campaign in pre-release status, which is an open-source RISC-V-based microcontroller. Hmm... Not sure what to make of this one, as there's not much information on what it really is achieving. Let's see if the new upboard kickstart has gone live. Oh, really? Come on, guys. Let's get a move on. If you're into analog acquisition, then this board has 8 12-bit ADCs, 2 12-bit DACs, and 2 PWMs, oscillator, and extra GPIOs. Although they say it is to be used with a Raspberry Pi, you could really use any microcontroller that has an SPI bus. This little breakout contains a FRAM chip, which is a non-volatile RAM that offers faster write, lower power and more write array cycles than other non-volatile memory. Now you can have an oscilloscope in your pocket. Great! This is actually a handy little digital oscilloscope with a small OLED display, capable of sampling up to 300 kHz. So it's not the bee's knees, but, but something that is useful nonetheless. The slush engine was on Kickstarter a while back, and it is a souped-up stepper motor controller. It allows you to control acceleration and deceleration ramps, current draw, and supports up to four 7 amp steppers, running off between 9 to 35 volts. It handles all the control of the steppers for you, making your code simpler. 
This little board is based off the BQ25504 chip, which is a solar cell LiPo charger. Handy if you want your project to run outside for extended periods. This LoRa breakout module is based on the RN2483 and RN2903 microchip modules. This is a 3.3V based module, so you'll need logic level converters if you want to use it in a 5V scenario. One of my patrons mentioned to me that there was a batch of LoRa modules that have some firmware issues, which made them unusable in certain parts of the world. Essentially, if you're down under and you're looking for LoRa modules, I'll hold off getting them until that's been fixed. If you want to get into SMD soldering, then this little kit looks good. It provides all the bits required to create a little GPIO expansion board. Of course, it doesn't include soldering iron. Then we have the upboard. Oh, finally! It's live now on Kickstarter. Excellent! Okay, so the next revision is a departure from the Raspberry Pi form factor, and it's no surprise. They've gone and added in two HDMI and one ADP port capable of 4K video, two 1 gigabit Ethernet, four USB 3, SATA port, M2 slot, PCIe and RTC. It runs the Apollo Lake CPU with Intel HD graphics and contains an Altera Max 10 FPGA. What the heck? This board has everything you'd want. They are releasing several versions, one with dual core M3550 CPU, up to 4 gigs RAM and 32 gig EMC, and the top end with quad core N4200, up to 8 gig RAM and 128 gig EMC. What makes it really interesting is the inclusion of an FPGA. I think this is the first board to have one. They're going fast, so get them while they're hot. From Seed, there's a software-defined radio allowing you to broadcast shortwave, longwave and AM bands between 10 kHz and 30 MHz. It's designed to fit onto a beagle bone, and so therefore is called a cape. Adafruit have their Zero 4U, which is essentially a four-port hub for the Pi Zero. Actually, it was in stock a few minutes ago, but apparently it's not now. The DRV8833 breakout allows you to control two DC motors or one stepper. It's a nice little low voltage motor controller capable of running between 2.7 and 10.8 volts. You won't be able to drive more than one amp, so it's designed only for low power applications. SpikeFun have their ESP32 thing. Oh, wait. No, they don't. It's on back order. If you want to get your hands on one, I'd suggest signing up to be notified. Then there's the Piper, which is a great new STEM concept that combines a modified version of Minecraft and a self-assembled kit that allows you to literally explore the world of electronics. A really great idea that will get any Minecraft-obsessed child into electronics. If you're into extreme UAVs and have trouble with your drone holding a stable position when GPS isn't available, then you'll need to get one of these. It's essentially a flow sensor similar to your mouse and can provide accurate 3 centimeter movement measurements. This nice little breakout allows you to detect the existence of any formaldehyde in the air. Useful for detecting volatile gases. Why not make a gas leak detector? If you want to start hacking around with your vehicle's CAN bus, then this breakout will do the trick. Capable of working on any CAN network up to 1 megabits per second. There's also an SD and TF card expansion slot Arduino shield. Oh, it also has two Grove connectors. Now this is weird. This robotic hand has five servos that control each of the finger digits. A little pricey, but at least all the hardware is there, I think. DigiKey have their Cortex M3 based module with all the usual stuff you find on the CC2650. Or if you want something a little more beefy, you can step up to an octa-core Samsung Arctic module. They are pricey, but you are getting Bluetooth, Zigbee, 16 gig EMC, 2 gigs RAM, and all the usual GPIO options in one small package. You can also check out the Arctic 710 and the Arctic 520 modules. That's it for this week's weekly roundup. As always, links are in the description below and also on my website. Don't forget you can click on the on-screen icons to follow or subscribe to me, and you can also support me on Patreon, which helps me help you. Thanks again for watching and see you next week.